Hello, this is the next formula in a playlist that I'm calling correlation and we're looking at partial correlation and specifically we're going to derive a formula which they call recursive formula and this is it and so this is a video that's actually going to be pretty tedious but if your goal is to learn how this is proved then you know then this video is going to be quite helpful and also there's a lot of similar derivations so we're going to go through certain derivations that I think are going to be helpful for the understanding. And then the der derivations that are very similar to that, we're just going to give the results. And we'll do that two or three times, and then the results will follow. So here's the proof. Um, oh, first, partial correlation is we're looking at the correlation between X and Y while controlling for another variable. So ultimately, we take uh, X, regress it on the Z, and then look at the residuals. And then, so X ends up being, you know, the information in X that with Z removed. And then we do the same thing with Y. We regress Y on the Z, take the residuals, and then we use the residuals, which is essentially Y with Z removed, uh, take the correlation between them, and we have them. But this is a recursive formula for this partial correlation. So here we're going to take X and regress it onto Z, and this is what we get. Uh, we're going to assume Z is centered, and so that means subtract the mean for each component. And then we can find the residuals, and we're going to call it XZ because we regressed X onto Z. We're going to look at the uh, expected or average squared residual which then we get this and then the expected value of something squared is the, is equal to the variance of that plus the mean squared of this quantity now the now when we take the variance the variance you know it goes in here so the variance of xx uh, the constant doesn't play a part so then we're going to look at the variance of this component uh, which I don't do. I, I look at this first. The variance of this is this. So that you know this is out front. Then you take the transpose out back, and then it's the variance of z, which we'll just call variance of zz. Then you then it's this and that, and so there ends up being two of those. The variance of xz uh, beta one, and then this here. The expected value is a linear operator, so it comes in. That's a constant. And since that's centered, that's zero, so it drops out quantity squared. Now let's call this a function of beta zero and beta one. Beta one's a vector. Now the partial derivative of Q with respect to beta zero, these are all constant, becomes here, so we get two and then times expected value minus beta, chain rule times minus one, set it to zero, solve for beta zero. To do this for beta one, that's constant. Here, this is a quadratic. I have a video called Taking the Derivative of Quadratic Functions. So this becomes this. Uh, here, we just get what's out front. That's constant. Set it to zero. Solve for beta one. We get this. Now, notice that it's beta one transpose. You know, if we wanted beta, then we'd have to take the transpose of both sides. This is symmetric. It, it comes first. Uh, this would be transferred out back or transposed out back. You could actually call it uh, sigma of zx when you transform it because it's, it's a symmetric matrix. So when using what we just found for beta 0 and beta 1, we can come up with the error here, which is this. So we plug in beta 0, and this is beta 1 transpose. And so we could do that for the other residuals, where we, we regress x onto, the all, onto z except for the first one, and come up with the same thing. So same derivations, residual of z1 regressed onto the other z regressors, uh, e, epsilon e z minus 1, epsilon y minus z. So these derivations are going to be similar to those. So we'll just have to pass you off on that. Now, here is something that we're going to need. If we let this notation, z1, z1 dot, z minus 1, equal these matrices, 
And we're doing that because we eventually want to take the inverse of sigma zz. So this is the variance covariance matrix of all the predictor variables. Then this can be partitioned into the first component and then all the other z variables. And then if we think of the result as just a, b, c, d, so this is the inverse matrix. Um, I have a video called inverse of a partition matrix. These become the, uh, these quantities here. So A is this, B is this, C is this. And, and I'm writing this down because in one of the derivations that I'm getting ready to do, it's easier to think about it like this and then add in the right components at the end of the derivation. So if we look at the covariance between XZ, the you know, epsilon XZ and epsilon YZ, so this is the residual of X after regressing it on the Z, the residual of Y after regressing it on the Z, we get this. So we plug in what the, the epsilon terms are, and now we just start taking the covariance. So the covariance of X and Y, so this is the covariance of X and this term, which is this, and then we have this term and Y, which is this, and then we have this term and this term, which is this. Now we start writing that in our shorthand notation, the covariance of X and Y, we're just going to write sigma X and Y. Here, uh, this piece gets transformed out back. You uh, take the transpose of it and take it out back, which is what this piece is, right? Transpose these reverse, and then that's the covariance of x and z, which is this. Um, this becomes this. This becomes that. Now, the inverse. Oh, notice this though. That, so here we have, th this becomes the identity. So then we have this plus that. So those actually cancel and we're left with just this, right? Now let's write this in a different terms where the Z, we want to isolate that Z1 component. So this comes down, this we write into, break into two. So this is the covariance between X and all the Z components. But let's look at the first component and then the rest. And then let's do that for this, inverse, and then that piece comes down here. Now, the answer to this, we remember we called it A, B, C, D. So now let's take this times that matrix, and we get this. That comes down. And then this times that, we get this. And now we're going to fill in what A, C, B, and D are. And that's right here. And now A is actually a constant, so it's that constant inverse, we can take it down. So that's, um, see this piece here, that's a constant, and it's going to be inverse, and I'll show you once. It ends up being this right here, which was this, and then this is a constant, though that's one dimensional. And so we want that inverse so that we can just actually divide it. It's not a matrix, it's a scalar notation. And then, so we get this after plugging in A, B, C, and D into this. Oh, and this piece right here. Um, now, if we um, take this, so uh, this piece and this piece will we'll just kind of offset because it doesn't have that same denominator and that's what this piece is so that and this come down now all these others you can actually factor it into this so this minus this this piece minus that right so this piece you get from that times this of course it's all divided by this and then you take this times that that times that and you do get this back then this right here is the covariance that we derived on the first page you know very similar and then this is a covariance this is a covariance and this is a variance so if you do the derivations that we did on the first page you get this and then very similar if we were to take the variance of this we would get this quantity 
variance of this we get this quantity now let's start deriving the formula so we take the correlation of x and y controlling for z and correlation is the covariance divided by the standard deviations or the square root of the variances plug in what we just derived into each of those pieces uh, factor this out factor this out and put it in the numerator then this is correlation so that this is the conditional correlation conditional correlation conditional correlation 1 minus the conditional correlation squared squared and the proof is finished well, I hope you enjoyed that. We went a little fast, but you can pause the video if needed. Uh, please like it, subscribe, and don't, so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.